So today we're going to work on calculating return on assets, the components of return on assets, and residual income. And here we have four divisions of Raffield. So we're just going to practice making these calculations for each of the firms. And then we're going to scroll down to the second part of the exercise and complete the uh, missing pieces here, which is kind of like working backwards, because here they've given us the return on assets and residual income, and we have to go back and solve for the uh, raw elements. So let's start here. Let's start with Division 17. So they want profit margin, and profit margin is operating income over sales. So we would have operating income and divide it by sales. And that's expressed as a percent. So here's 6%. Maybe we want a few more decimal places in there. It's not exactly 6%, but close. Asset turnover is sales divided by assets. So sales divided by total assets or average operating assets. And that's just expressed as um, an integer. 1.66 is not a percent typically. Uh, return on investments is typically reported as a percent, and that would be operating income over average operating assets. And we could also add some decimal places to that. And then residual income now is this computation here. So residual in the income is going to start with profits, and then we're going to subtract a capital charge. So the capital charge is your average operating assets times the required or the minimum rate of return. So do we have a required or minimum rate of return? We do, over here, 11%. So the capital charge is going to be the total or the average operating assets times that 11%. So then residual income is your profits minus that capital charge. So in this case, Div Division 17 has a negative residual income, which doesn't mean that they're unprofitable. They were profitable. They made 50000 in operating income, but that was not in excess of the required amount. So they were required to earn 11%. They earned 10%, right? So a little bit below. So we would expect a small negative residual income. So you may want to freeze this and see if you can work the other divisions, and then you can check your answer. So for profit margin, again, that was profit divided by sales. And then asset turnover was sales divided by your assets. And then return on investment was profit divided by assets. And you can check yourself. Well, what happened there? You can check yourself. Uh, by multiplying profit margin times asset turnover, and you should get return on assets or return on investment. Um, some people call it return on assets. Some people call it return on investments. It's typically the same computation. Return on investment is usually when you're just looking at one particular project, whereas return on assets is usually the entire firm, but not necessarily. Some use one term. Some use another. So what would you predict residual income to be here, positive or negative? You should have predicted negative and more negative than Division 17 because they're well below the 11%, whereas Division 17 was close but under the 11% target. And if we just drag over Excel, it's wonderful because it will retain the formulas I put in. And so we get this very large negative residual income, which we did expect. And what about Division 93? Now, they, they have a 16%. So now you would expect a positive residual income because they're earning more than the required 11%. And yes, in fact, they do have a positive residual income. OK, and then for Division 104, you can do the math, just like we did the first two divisions. And so they are earning even more above the required rate of return. So we would expect their residual income to be the highest of all of them, and, and it is. So now we're going to move towards actually solving backwards. So let's move to that piece of the exercise. 
So here for division A, we know these various answers, we just don't know sales. So which one of these down here did we use sales to compute and therefore we might be using be able to use sales to solve? Sales is part of profit margin, isn't it? Sales is part of asset turnover. Sales is not part of return on investment. So either one of these two could be used to solve backwards for sales. We're going to use profit margin, but you could have used asset turnover as well. So profit margin is 50,000 divided by that equals that. Okay, so let's let me make a little sheet for you. So here algebraically is what I was just telling you that profit over sales, and we don't know what sales is, equals this profit margin 12.5%. So that's the same thing as 0.125, right? Expressed as a decimal instead of expressed as a percent by moving the decimal two places to the left. And so um, this is a cross multiply, which means that we can interchange sales and 12.5%. So by exchanging places sales and the 0.125, I get sales of 50,000 divided by 0.125 equals sales, and so sales is 400,000. And you can check. You can take the 400,000, put it where sales is, and see if it ends up being 0.125, and if it does, you're okay, and if it doesn't, you've done something wrong. All right, let's go back to our data then. Here's the first one. The second one they want us to solve for operating income. So we need to find some statistic down here that uses operating income. Well, here they've got operating income in the calculation of residual income. So we already know that we have it. If we didn't have it there, we could have solved for it using profit margin or using return on investment, using the same practice that we had with Division A. So we could have said that operating income divided by sales gives us 15% and then solve for operating income. I'll show you what that looks like. So operating income is the numerator. Sales was a million. So whatever that was divided by a million gave you 15% or 0.15 expressed as a decimal. And so here we can cross multiply by taking the million times the 0.15 and that will give us operating income. Now for C, we want to get average operating assets. So uh, we can't use profit margin because uh, average operating assets is not part of that computation, but we could have picked either of these two in order to solve for it. So uh, I'll go ahead and use return on assets, so, like I did in A. Take my profit and divide by my return. And you can check and make sure that works by taking your 100,000 and divide it by your 625 and see if you get your 16%. And if you don't, then you have to go back and look at that. Okay, now in D, we got to solve for all three. So why don't you try freezing it and see if you can do that. All right, well, why don't we start with the easy one since operating income is part of the calculation of residual income. We're we're already loaded with that one. And we can use that 50,000 and divide it by our profit margin to get sales. And for average operating assets here, I'm going to use return on investment to solve. And there we go. 